Okay. Okay, we're doing 100 divided by 7 using estimated quotients using models. So we have 100 divided by 7. So what we've been doing is just doing times 7 up here, make a little chart. Okay, so we're getting close to 100. First number we can use is what, class? 12. 12? Okay, what if we're not comfortable with, what if we don't know our 12s? Let's go with 11, because anything times 11 is single digits, just double that number, right? Yeah. So let's put a let's put eleven up here, and what is 77. eleven times seven? Seventy-seven. Okay. So let's just keep counting up like because seventy-seven is pretty close to hundred, right? Yeah. Okay. So what's the next number? Twelve, right? Yep. Nice thing is here, seven times twelve, you're just adding seven. So what's seventy-seven plus seven? Eighty-four. Okay. What goes here now? Thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. What is 13 times 7? 91. Right. And if you don't know that, like I wouldn't know that right offhand, what did I do? I added 7. That's all you got to do. All right. So the next one's going to be what? 14. This is going to be? 98. Next one's going to be what? 15 times 7. So add 7, what do you get? 105. 105. And an important way to check yourself is... Anytime you multiply a number by 5, it ends in a 5 or a 0. So that would have to end in a 5 or a 0, whether it was 15, 25, 35, 85, whatever. So, here's 100. Which two of these is it between? 14 and 15. Exactly. Okay, you can't write these down. 100 is between these, so the quotient is either, it's between 14 and 15, so you put down 14 and 15. About 14. Well, we got a quick talker out there. And? It's going to be about 14 because 98 is closer to 100 than 105 is. Very good, very good. Okay, again, this is Go Math Lesson 4.1, and we'll go over to the next one. I better scroll down, though. You guys think I should scroll down? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Oh. Not broke the book. All right. So now we get rid of the rest of this that we were doing last time. And we try it again. Now, a basic rule we've been doing is what, class? If it's three digits... We multiply by the tens, right? Yeah. Okay, so we make our chart again. Uh, can you guys see me in here? Yeah. There? Okay. All right, we make our chart again, and it's going to be times 7 again, right? Yep. But we're going on the tens, aren't we? Yes. Okay, what times 7 gets close to 438? And you can think of it as 43, <laughs> but then... Oh, good answer, Jack. What is it? 60. 60. Because... Six times seven is 42, but it has to be 60, right? So we put 60 up here. What goes down here? Seven times 60. What is it? 420. Okay. So then we go to what? 70. What is seven times 70, class? 490. Very good. Okay. Well, 438 is in between those, so it's a. It, what is it? 60. Yeah, it's your two top numbers. That's why we put them on top, so we remember them. 60 and 70. About 60. Why about 60, Michael? Because 70 is 190, and 420 is closer than 490. Very good. 438 is closer to 420, so it's about 60. 60. Okay. All right, now we have another one. I know it's... 803, but it's a three digit number. But honestly, it's pretty close, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so let's just start out with should we do 11 again? Yeah. Okay, so times 8, we put 11 here. 88. 88. 88. Gives us 88. 12 gives us, we well, just add 8, right? Yep. yep. What do you get? It's a lot easier saying you have to give the answer. What is it? 96. 96. All right. Okay, so we bring the next one over. That's what number is going to be up here? 13. 
13. Okay, if I add 8 to 96, 104. Okay, so that works. So it's going to be 12 and 13. About 13. About 13, because 104 is really close, isn't it? Yeah. Okay? It can get confusing when you're comparing your products to this. What do we call 103? It's called the dividend. Dividend. And 8 is our? Divisor. Divisor. Very good. Very good. Okay. Now we're ready for number 10. All right, and this is the last one uh, we'll do together, but now I can go by tens because that's a pretty big number, right? Yeah. Okay, so what times 9 gets close to 25? I don't want it bigger yet, so think of your multiples. Think of your count bys, if you will. Okay, if I'm counting by nines, I got like 9, 18... 27. Oh, 27 is too big, so what should I stop with there? Go ahead. 18. 18. 9 times 18? I mean 2. Right, 2. But what you really mean 20. is 20. Okay, very good. See, that's why I can get confusing. I know you wrote it down right in your paper, but we got to be able to say it right, too. So 9 times 20 is 180. Okay, so what do we put here now? 30. 30. We're just counting up. What's 9 times 30? 270. 270, thank you. Okay, so we made it. So it's going to be 20 and? 30. Don't tell me yet, guys. Let's hold on. And then if we look at it, 255 is obviously closer to 270, 30. so it would be? 30. About 30. Why do we have to write about? We can't just write 30. Why do we have to write about? Well, uh, go ahead. Because it might not be the actual answer. It's just closer to it. It's just closer to it. It's not the actual answer. We're estimating, okay? If we wanted the exact answer, we would, uh, we'll get there. But not this lesson, okay? All right. Do the problem solving.